Okay, so in transient conduction, temperature depends not only on position in the solid, but also on time. So mathematically, this can be written as T, means the temperature, is equals to T of X, Y, Z and Tau. Tau is the time, it's, it's written there. So typical examples of transient conduction are heat exchangers, boiler tubes, cooling of IC engine cylinder heads. So first of all, uh, you might be you know, thinking a question, what do you mean by transient heat conduction? Transient heat conduction is just the opposite of steady state conduction. Uh, we have already covered steady state conduction when I was deriving the conduction equations in various coordinates. So this, uh, I'm just repeating it once again. Steady state conduction is a conduction where the heat doesn't change with time, okay? But transient, yes, it does changes with time. And this is the main, and this is the most important thing that you will ever solve. Because in each and every practical application, you, you will never find it's a steady state conduction because there are losses and losses actually increases with time. So definitely the value of heat either goes up or goes down as per the application. So generally the value of heat comes down because there are losses and losses actually increase with time. Okay, so you need to take measures uh, which, is, uh, which will be taken up later on. So the typical examples of transient conduction and, and see, they all are practical examples like heat exchangers, okay, boiler tubes, cooling of IC engines, cylinder heads, okay. Examples are continuing now, heat treatment of engineering components and quenching of ingots. What is quenching? Quenching is basically, you know, you just heating it uh, in an oven and then you are just, you know, putting that particular ingot uh, immediately into the liquid oil, means cooled oil. So what happens? There is a sudden drop in temperature and the material gets harder, okay? So this is basically quenching and definitely you are seeing that the quenching is basically with the time you have actually changed the temperature. So this is a very, very, very important example of this particular topic that is transient heat conduction. Heating of electric irons, definitely when you turn on your uh, ironing machine, it is not already hot. So it takes time. So with the time, the heat is adding up. So this is an example of heat addition. Heating and cooling of buildings, definitely during the daytime, it is hotter. During the nighttime, it is cooler, okay? Freezing of foods, okay? Lump system analysis, Newtonian heating or cooling. This is the main topic for today's video, okay? In lump system analysis, the internal conduction, you just uh, read these yellow parts very carefully. In lump system analysis, the internal conduction resistance of the body to heat flow, L by Ka, and you know what is L by Ka. This is the conduction thermal resistance. As I have already shown this to, uh, this to you in my previous video shoots. Uh, so I'm reading it once again. The internal conduction resistance of the body to heat flow, that is L by Ka, is negligible compared to the convective resistance, that is 1 by Ha. This, uh, this uh, I have discussed in my previous videos. Okay? So the temperature of the body no doubt varies with time. Okay? At any given instant, the temperature within the body is uniform and is, in, and is independent of the position, that is T, is only now depending on the time. Okay? Lump system analysis, again, continuing. Practical example of such cases are heat treatment of small metal pieces, measurement of temperature with a thermocouple or thermometer. Okay, uh, when you are, you know, uh, when you are down with a fever, you know that the thermometer mercury actually goes up very slowly and steadily because the temperature doesn't go, doesn't shoot up like that. It takes some time. So definitely the time, uh, sorry, the temperature is the function of time. So that is what we are dealing now. Okay, so practical examples of such cases are heat treatment of small metal pieces, measurement of temperature with thermocouple or thermometer, etc., where the internal resistance of the object for heat conduction may be considered as negligible. Okay, D analysis. Consider a solid body of arbitrary shape, volume V, mass M, density rho, surface area A, and specific heat Cp. Okay, this is the figure to be understood. This is any any particular object, okay, and these are the uh, uh, properties like M, V, Rho, and T. To start with, at the initial time, that is tau is equals to zero, tau is equals to zero when you, when you know, start the timer, let the temperature throughout the body be uniform at T is equals to Ti, okay? So at that instant, so this 
is having this temperature that is T is equals to T i. So at that instant means that tau is equals to 0, let the body be suddenly placed in a medium at a temperature T a means suppose if you are taking uh, a condition of quenching, okay. Just now I have explained to you the condition of quenching uh, means the process of quenching that is a heat treatment process okay, to make the material harder. Suddenly you are dipping it in, suddenly the, the, the temperature has reduced, see it is T A, suddenly it is being uh, exposed to the ambient temperature or any temperature that is T A and which is lesser than T I, which is lesser than T I. Writing an energy balance for this situation. So, the amount of heat transferred into the body in interval d tau, d tau means the time interval, okay. The amount of time that is taking from, uh, from, uh, from the body to cool from the temperature T i to d tau or uh, uh, to, uh, so to T a, okay. So, tau is the temperature. So, tau is the temperature of, you know, we are calculating the time from, you know, the reduction of temperature from T i to T a or for that matter any temperature in between, okay. So, increase in the internal energy of the body in time interval dt will be H A T A minus T tau dt is equals to M C P dt. This is the change in internal energy. This is the change in internal energy and this is the convection, okay. H A T A minus T tau, okay. So, now since T A is constant, we can write so, definitely what we can do is, we can actually club it like this, okay. We can actually club it like this because the T A is constant. So, when the T A is constant, so this is what we can rearrange to and then we get this equation and this is a very important equation for this particular topic. So, this H A by rho C P V, let us go ahead first of all, integrating it. Okay, now we will be integrating it just because we have this d terms right now, right. We have this d term. So, if we integrate this, so after integrating, we are getting natural log of this should be equals to minus h a tau by rho c p v, okay, v is the volume actually, okay. So, finally, what is happening is now if we remove, if we remove the natural log from this side. So, it will be e to the power, okay, it will be e to the power minus h a tau by rho c p v. Now, can you see this? There is a terminology, there is a term of time here. So, all this thing, all this thing should also have the, you know, unit of time, okay. So, let the surface, so uh, all this thing should also have a unit of time. So, let the surface on the left be maintained at temperature T1 and the surface on the right is at temperature T2 as a result of heat being lost to a fluid temperature T A flowing with a heat transfer coefficient H A writing an energy balance at the right hand surface, it will be conduction is equals to convection, okay. So, now let us talk about criteria for lump system analysis. So, criteria for lump system analysis, okay. So, uh, let me just tell you one thing. Uh, this, this particular term minus H A by rho C V, this, if we write it like this, rho C P V by H A, this is called thermal time constant. This is a very important thing. This is a thermal time constant and it comes along with the tau and its unit are also seconds, okay. So, this is nothing but conduction is getting equated to convection, okay. Now, criteria for lump system analysis. So, the criteria for lump system analysis is basically when we rearrange that particular term, when we rearrange this equation, so we get like L by K A by 1 by H A. So, L by K A we all know that is resistance of conduction and 1 by H A we all know that is resistance of convection, okay. So, this term H L by K is a very, very important number, it is a dimensionless number and this is termed as Biot's number, okay. This is termed as Biot's number, it is a dimensionless number. So, Biot's number B i and this is the checking criteria, this is the checking criteria that whether you will be applying lumped analysis or whether you will be applying Heisler's chart 
So you will first of all, in any numerical, you will first of all check the Biot's number and Biot's number's formula is HL by K and it is actually the ratio of thermal resistance of conduction by thermal resistance of convection. And if the Biot's number is lesser than 0.1, the temperature gradient in the solid is small and temperature can be taken as a function of time only. So this is 0.1 actually, okay. So this is 0.1, okay. Now, note also that for Biot's number greater than 0.1, okay, greater than 0.1, temperature drop across the solid is much larger than that across the convective layer at the surface. So let us define Biot number in general as Biot's number is HLC by K and this LC is nothing but the characteristic length and characteristic length is equals to volume upon area and we know that volume is equals to area into length. It has been derived from the same formula, okay, C is the volume upon area where the H is the heat transfer coefficient between the solid surface and surroundings, K is the thermal conductivity of the solid and LC is a characteristic length defined as the ratio of the volume of the body, okay. So therefore, this equation can therefore be written as HL by K, see this equation, this equation can therefore be written as HL by K into alpha tau by LC square, okay. This is the RHS, this is the RHS and LHS remains this. LHS remains this, okay. So now we can write it as min product of minus of Biot's number into another dimensionless number which is very important that is Fourier's number. So Biot's number we have already seen that is HLC by K where LC is the characteristic length and the Fourier's number is written here. It is alpha tau by LC square and alpha is same that we have uh, seen in the previous video of while we were deriving the 3D conduction equation. So that is basically thermal diffusivity, okay?